Hi everyone, welcome back to the Stay Hungry podcast. It's Joel at Codebreak, and today I'm joined by Paul Kamek. This episode is called Espresso Yourself. Paul, welcome to the Stay Hungry podcast. Thank you for having me, Joel. So for the uninitiated out there, Paul is the man, the legend, the owner of Alfie's Coffee Company, and also the supplier of Co-Break's own coffee, which if you are watching on YouTube and not listening, I am holding up our coffee now. So um, I suspect we might have been the first company, if not marketing company, to ask you for our own roast. Yes, you would You would be right. Yeah, you would be right. And thank you for continuing to be uh, a supplier. That's all right. I think what are we two years into that now? Maybe longer. Yeah, yeah, I th- yeah. I think two years, may- maybe pushing on three. I think. Yeah. 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 So, um, yeah, for listeners, we uh, if we have a hot prospect, I should say, so we send out something that's known in the marketing game as a shock and awe box, and in our box you will get a copy of our book. You'll get uh, like a beanie or a cap. You'll get some sweets. You'll get a letter. You'll get a water bottle, some other bits and bobs, and some amazing Alfie's coffee. Um, Boom. Um, i got to say, the thing people comment on the most is the coffee. Is it really? Yeah, people love it. And loads of people, including people that have approached you, have copied us. <laughs> it's like, yeah, 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 that's true, actually. Yeah, yeah, a few people have said, oh, yeah, I've, I've seen this idea before, and I'm thinking, hmm, I wonder where that's from. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, one of, like, one of my mentors has, like, outright ripped that idea off. And then um, other people who have, like, come to our events and stuff have even approached you, and you now supply them. Yeah, coffee. yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You've got a spy, mate. I know. Like, I can I, see him. I, I in quite like peripheral. it. I quite like it. So um, <laughs> if you are just a listener... Uh, Paul's kids are like flying around in the background trying to figure out what he's up to. Um, so, Paul, uh, two things that we really want to get into on this is, I guess, what's what's Alfie's Coffee and um, the launch of your book, which, as we're recording right now, was released today on the 1st of December on Amazon. It was indeed, look. look Espresso yourself. Look yeah, we've both got a copy. <laughs> look at that. Congratulations, mate. That's wicked. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, really, really pleased. It's been kind of like... Um, a labour of love, but in a in a good way. I mean, you know, you and Andy have both written a book, so you yeah. know the the time it takes, the effort it takes. But I mean, I've learned a lot through actually writing it. So obviously, you, you have your um your your plan of what you want to talk about in the book, mm. but then there's obviously research that you need to do because you don't know everything. Uh, so yeah. there's also there's research that you need to do. So it's amazing the amount of things that I've actually learned and new techniques I've picked up. Um, and, and just, you know, especially in terms of like the recipes, you know, I've got like my recipes that I use, but then you're also looking at other people's recipes and maybe taking a bit of that, which you, um, you implement and then think, oh, actually that works a bit better than what I was doing. So I, I'll, I'll nick that. Um, so exp- explain what you mean by that. Cause there'll be people listening to this podcast that'll be like, what do you mean? Coffee recipe. So like making a cake, you can't just throw everything in and, and expect to make a nice Victoria sponge. It doesn't it doesn't work like that. Right. And coffee is the same. I mean, if you if I mean, back when I was a kid, um, you'd have your your mum, you'd get out the brown jar of instant coffee horribleness. Yeah. Put a lump in, pour some boiling water in. And that was your coffee. Um, some people still enjoy that. And, and that's fine. Well, I, I remember I remember this is. This is my indicator how old I am. But um we had like instant coffee and it wasn't like it wasn't like Nescafe was posh to us, right? So we right. had like mellow birds or something like that. Oh like, nice. Some, Happy shopper. Yeah, some <laughs> bullshit. Like it doesn't taste <laughs> like coffee. But then at Christmas for a treat, maybe on Christmas Eve, you, the filter coffee would come out and you'd have like a little percolator thing. Nice. And, um and, and like the 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 kids and by kids I mean teenagers could have a, a filter coffee and the adults might make an Irish coffee and that was like, nice. like this is pre Starbucks. This is like that, <laughs> that would have been considered like 
yeah you know a bit of a mrs bouquet moment like yeah, who do yeah, they yeah, think yeah. they are sort of thing yeah that's it yeah yeah but but rec- but your recipe is really important mm. um like whether you're making an espresso or a french press or a mocha pot or a, like a pour over if you don't have a recipe for instance you could make a coffee that was absolutely mind blowing yeah that that was the best coffee you've ever tasted but if you've just winged it and put a couple of spoons in how are you going to know how to replicate that because you don't have any variables yeah so you need to start with with a baseline of i'm going to try this for for you know say for, say for instance my my um, recommendation for espresso is 18 grams of ground coffee which goes to the machine, which makes 36 grams of espresso. So it's a one to two ratio. Yeah. So that's what I use. You can scale it up. So you could go 20 grams, 40 grams of espresso, depending if you want your uh, coffee taste a little bit stronger. But if, if I just whacked a load in, you wouldn't you wouldn't know. You wouldn't know what would be good for your palate. And yeah. then when people come into the cafe, they, they ask me, oh, I'm using all these different tools. I'm using the scales. And they're looking at me like I've got two heads. But there's a reason for it because you get that consistency that you wouldn't get if you didn't have a recipe. So same with making a cake. Yeah. So like, obviously this is a a business podcast in terms of like the business decision making there, you've got taste profile. That's obviously important. You've got coffee is expensive. So you've got the cost of coffee. Um, then the quality of the ingredients I'm assuming. Um, and also your audience, because yeah. you, let's face it, if you're a burger van in a lay-by with polystyrene cups, yeah, having scales to measure your coffee is probably a waste of energy. Absolutely. Uh, so, how does that stack as like a, as a business proposition? How do you sit there and go to create the best cup of coffee at this price point? This is what I need to do. Well, I mean, you've, you've got to be dictated by by your audience as well in, yeah. in some respect because some people will come into my cafe and just want something that's hot and brown um, yeah. but then you'll also get the people who are really interested and have a vested interest in all the elements of coffee um so then you you know you can tailor what you say to them to, to dictate what you say you know yeah you, you've got if, if you want the person that just wants a latte because they want something that's tastes nice great but then you'll get the you know them you can see them in as soon as they walk through the door but it, i think yeah you, you've just you've just got to dictate and, and and do what your audience gives you yeah so like i did an event the other weekend and i could tell the guy from a mile off because he was asking the right questions so then i could give him a different answer but to what i would give somebody else because of the questions he was asking um and i suppose it's the same you know in, in terms of your marketing like you've got to you've got to listen yeah. you can't just be talking all the time you've got to be listening and and um giving that feedback to what people are asking you and telling you and what are they need requiring of you especially if you as a marketing company mm. you know if, if you're just blanketing everyone with the same brush that'll work for some people but then for other people it, it won't you know but because you, you need that um curated approach otherwise it doesn't work you can't tire everyone with the same marketing brush yeah, got you. Yeah, no, we we say you've got two ears, one mouth. Use them in that ratio. Absolutely. Um, which sometimes I'm really good at, and other times not so much. <laughs> so, but you are the host, so you would expect you to talk a little more. Oh yeah, in a podcast sense, absolutely. But uh, it's, it's interesting. I've just I've just been to a like a mastermind event in Glasgow, and uh, there's certain business owners that just fucking love talking. Like they talk and talk and talk and talk. I'm like, you're not going to learn anything. No, no. Like it is. <laughs> and, uh, and I guess some people have earned the right to talk. But it's, it's yeah, it's fascinating that you say that, that like listening to the feedback, looking at your customer profile, being aware of if it's someone that just wants something quick and easy or someone yes. that's like, I don't know. You, I, you can probably tell by their order because I can imagine. You know, I want a double shot americano with some sugar-free caramel syrup. You're like, okay, that, this person's had coffee before, as, as, as opposed <laughs> yeah. to someone who's like, "Can I have a black coffee, please?" 
yeah, yeah. Can I just have something brown and hot, please? Yeah. But yeah, you, you know, so you'll just you'll know because of, of the questions they ask you straight off that they're interested. Yeah. So how does it go from, you know, running a successful coffee business to deciding to write a book about it? I think I just wanted to, so like my my tagline on LinkedIn is is helping people on their journey to coffee nirvana. So part of that is the teaching aspect of it. Like the, the coffee side, great. Um and I mean I tell my 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 wholesale customers this, like if if I sold you, if you were a cop cafe owner, if it was code break cafe, for instance, before if you, you came... before you say too much, can you change that tagline to smells like bean spirit? I've absolutely smashed that. Nice. I've absolutely so... smashed that. <laughs> okay. I was like, I've got a Nirvana get, pun, get and I, I need to use it. <laughs> Sorry, I, I was going on a T-shirt. So, 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 for instance, you 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 were the the proprietor of Code Break Cafe, and you came to me and said, uh, "I really want you to be our coffee supplier." Yeah, I could just sell you a load of beans, and you could pay my invoice, and and off we go. But that's that's not fulfilling our our agreement that's not fulfilling our our relationship because mm. you're not you're not getting as much of of me as as you should because i need to get the best i want you to get the best out of the coffee beans so so, so then that then filters through to your customers so then yeah. your customers then will know cobrake Co coffee shop is the best coffee shop to go in shropshire and then it it goes on from there and permeates out so without me teaching you and without me taking you on that journey to coffee nirvana as i say then that relationship is very 2d it's very one-dimensional so that's the reason i wrote the book really is to make sure that if people are buying coffee from me from alfie's then they've got a kind of guide to teach them how to make mind-blowing espresso because that, that's the, that's the subline of the, of the yeah. book that's what i want people to do and I know some people will think, well, coffee's coffee. It doesn't really matter. But then, you know, people will think, well, football's football. It doesn't really matter. But, you know, everyone has their interests. And everyone, you know, it, it completely differs depending on who you are. Like some people would, would think you're absolutely crazy spending a thousand pounds on a coffee machine for your, your kitchen. But other people think that's a worthy investment because they drink three to five cups of coffee a day. See, I don't, if think, you're not... I don't think I've mentioned this on the podcast before. Um, so mm. I, qu I quite like coffee. Um, yeah. I certainly don't know anything like as much about it as you do. Um, mm. When we bought our house, the house had an integrated coffee machine built Amazing. in. And the people selling it to us said, oh, we can rip that out or you can keep it. But the house will be £800 more if you keep it. Right. <laughs> But it would have left a massive hole in the unit if right, they'd have ripped right, it out. Yeah. So we genuinely paid eight hundred pounds more for our house because of the to have an machine. integrated coffee machine. And then I looked up what it cost, and it was like two grand when they bought yeah. it. Yeah, right, so right. There right. are people out there living in, you know, I don't live in a mansion. Like there are people out there living in normal houses that have spent two grand on a coffee, a domestic coffee machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and you can see it all, all everywhere on, on Instagram. Like there's yeah. people who just have an interest it's not their day job you know, they just have a, an interest in making coffee and they've made an instagram you know account mm. on that's what they do they make coffee at home um and they've you know they become a coffee influencer because they just have a vested interest in it but it's like one of those rabbit holes you know i see in the book once you start it's a slippery slope because you'll just go down and down and down into yeah. this hole and, and looking into more and more you go into the science behind it um all the different tools that you can get when I mean, they range from you know 10 pounds up to like 110 pounds for the same potentially the same a bit a bit of kit but you know it's the same with anything you, you can get shiny object syndrome um and just buy stuff maybe for the sake of it but then to me i mean i go through the tools that i use in the book and the reasons why i use them um because they all they all make a difference yeah you know, there's, there's reasons why i do certain steps in the recipes to get a certain result and if you're not if you're not going to do that then you're not going to get mm. the result that you want um it's the same with you know same with, with business really you could try and take the shortcut but then you may get the quick gain but then uh, is, is that gain going to be sustainable 
probably not. Yeah, it might and be game for the short term, but not the long term. Like, I think I'm just literally off off to this side here. Not very glamorous, but it's kind of like our little kitchen area for the office. And um, I'm looking over there now. We've got our Lavazza coffee machine, which is kind of like convenient but relatively nice coffee. Mm. Then just to the right of that, I can see Kenko Instant and Kenko <laughs> Decaf. And then nice. obviously, obviously, if we wanted a really nice coffee, we'd have to go to like a coffee shop in town or something. And yeah. I think like coffee is like one of those things that you have like it's tiered, isn't it? So th- there'll be people that outright won't drink instant coffee. Um, mm. And and you could argue it's just a completely different product, I think. Yeah. Then there's people who wouldn't know the difference between like an espresso and a Lavazza coffee and having like a beautifully made latte in a in a cafe and then there's people who would absolutely know the difference but they drink both but one is a convenience drink and one is like a treat and mm-hmm. then there's people who maybe only have like two coffees a week but they they spend five to six pounds on those yeah coffees and and for them that's like how it should be and like, i think like a good comparison would be chocolate bars i guess there's like there's people who would like smash the snickers because they're hungry and, mm. and then there's people that would like order montezuma yeah uh, and sort of only eat like the corner of it on a friday night <laughs> yeah and that'd be that'd be their treat yeah but you know there's in terms of like coffee shops and stuff you've got your high street chains yeah which are more convenient yeah but then and you've got your speciality coffee shops which the baristas will be tra- trained to a certain standard yeah. So there's the Speciality Coffee Association. So they do training, which you have to pass an exam. There's like a practical exam. There's um, a written exam. And, you know, you have to pass those Yeah. because you're trained to a certain standard. So there'll be some coffee shops that will have all of their baristas trained to that level. So, you know, you can go into that coffee shop and know that whatever barista is making your coffee is going to be made to that standard. So, like, we, we've just been part of the, it's called the Indie Coffee Guide. Mm. So, um, the, the Welsh one has just been released a month, well, not last month um, because we used to be in the the south, uh, like, along with Bath and, like, Devon and, and that yeah. area. Um, and, and every shop in there has been curated by coffee experts. So, you wouldn't get the likes of Costa in there, for example, yeah, because they're not a speciality coffee shop. You know, it's all the independent speciality mm. coffee shops that know where their coffee has come from, have been trained. You know, they, they can do the latte art, but that's just fancy. But you know, they they understand if you went and speak spoke to them, you know, you could ask them all the the breadth of questions: where the coffee's from, what the roast profile is, how it was, what altitude it was grown at, you know, when it was harvested, all those things. You know, they'd know. Yeah, um, it doesn't it doesn't make a difference to maybe eighty percent of the world. But then that twenty percent who really know their stuff will will appreciate that and, and yeah. seek those seek those places out, and that's what you want. That's what you want to be known for. You know what you want to be known for that twenty percent of people who will come to you because they appreciate what you do. Yeah. It may be a little bit more expensive, but you know you're you're getting that quality, getting those results that you you pay for. Yeah. I mean, my my wife's family are Italian, and and they like a coffee. Um, but because of that, yeah. we've, we've spent quite a bit of time in Italy. Yeah, and yeah. like an Italian breakfast is is an espresso and a cigarette. <laughs> um, nice, nice. But I was surprised when I went how long it took for that espresso to be made. Mm-hmm. That really, yeah, yeah. Really caught me off guard. That yeah. it's it's a real skill. It, mm. it, it's not like. Uh, you used Costa, but Starbucks or whatever. It's not like where you stand at the end and it's going to be in your hand in thirty seconds. <laughs> yeah, you can just like, stand there, can't you? Like yeah, this? it's kind of like go and take a seat, sir. We'll bring it over, and yeah. you know this tiny little mug comes over, and uh, yeah, and um, yeah, and like you're talking time, like mm-hmm. r- like a real real attention to detail. Yeah, yeah, and that's the that's the thing. That's what makes the difference, though, and. As more the coffee you drink, I mean, some people ask me, well, how, how, like coffee just tastes like coffee, doesn't it? I said, well, yes, it does. But as you drink more and your, flavor and your palate develops, you'll be able to pick out, out 
the nuances from different regions and the different profiles and the different processes of, is how, of how the coffee was nurtured yeah. and stuff. You'd be able to pick that up. So, you know, you saying it takes time, but then that time is, is it, it, you're grateful for that time yeah. because then you can taste that in what you're drinking. Because if it was just thrown together, then it'd be like, well, it was okay. Maybe it served its purpose of maybe waking you up because you needed a wake up call because it was 5 a.m. in the morning or whatever. Yeah. But then the experience behind it, you've not got because I, I can see you're distracted by April over there in my corner. No, I, I, so Paul, Paul's daughter's just come into shot and she's like smiling because she snuck onto the podcast. And it's like, it's the best thing ever. Uh, yeah so um so yeah you, you, you know you 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 pay for that experience and and that um and, and that training and that love and that dedication that you get to uh for, for what for what you do you know i mean like people some like, like you said they said oh take a seat we'll bring it over some people don't expect that they expect them just to hand them a coffee they're meant to yeah. wait in their line hand them a coffee and off they go so but when i say that to, in, to my customers in my cafe i'll bring it over sometimes they look at you like oh Oh, okay so thank thank you like, i don't usually get that kind of service it's usually just a very much a throwaway or oh, yeah. you are move on to the next person you know but i you know I, I want each and every cup that i make to mean something um to, you know because i it, it's a um it's like a it's a calling card for, for me you know, yeah. if i make a really good coffee and then people sit down and they enjoy it and they're with their friends or what have you then they can go out and tell their friends who then tell their friends and then tell their friends. So me investing that time into Mrs. Jones, who came to have a coffee on a Friday afternoon, have then told all their friends at the WI and they all come for their next meeting. So then that one coffee has turned into 50 coffees. Nice so, one, Mrs. It, Jones. Yeah. Well done, Mrs. Jones. We like Mrs. Jones. Yeah. Legend. Legend of the game. So <laughs> what's it, what's it like for you then when, because, I, I suspect that that when you're out and about, you drink a fair bit of coffee. It must be like a horror show going um, in some places. Yeah, well, no, I mean, I do, I do seek out the the places where I know I'll have a good cup of coffee. Mm. You know, so if if we're going to go out, I'll I'll like take my indie coffee guide with me, for instance, and I'll know. I mean, it does. Holly does it does our reading because we'll be like, can we have a coffee? Yeah. And I'll get the thing out and I'll be flicking like through a, it. Like a train spotter, but yeah, the coffee like that. world. Yeah, 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 proper nerd. And then she'll say, but I just want to I just want to sit there and have a coffee. And I'm like, yeah, but, 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 and she'll be like, oh, for goodness sake. But obviously, because it's around Christmas now, it's the 1st of December, she'll be wanting to go to Starbucks because they've got them fancy cups. Yeah. So we have to go to two stops now. So we have to go to the coffee shop I want to go to because the coffee's good. Then we have to go to Starbucks because... Holly gets a nice Christmas mug, but yeah, I'm. And if like I if traitor. I go some, well, yeah, absolutely. If I go somewhere, and I know the coffee's not going to be very good, I'll have a cup of tea. Oof! <laughs> I know. Oh, I've got a terrible confession. Whilst we're on that, go on. I, I haven't had a cup of coffee for three months. Re really? Mm. Have you not? No. Is this because of your walk? Uh, no. Well, no. For context to that, I'm doing. A really stupid fun walk for fundraising but um no um i was just necking quite a bit of coffee so I was just making right. sure that i could not drink it if i wanted to and then i haven't had any but now i don't want to break that with like something crap like a starbucks oh <laughs> i see right so, right, right. so maybe like this right. bag comes home with me and that's 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 and you can stick it in your two grand coffee machine at home. Well, it's, I only put Alfie's coffee in it anyway, mate. You know, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Um, Good luck. So you you mentioned before, whilst you were doing your research for the book, that um, mm. you found out some really interesting and weird things as yeah. as you were studying. What like what? Well, I learned how to make a coffee liqueur out of coffee grounds which nice. makes for a really good um, Christmas present if you're wondering what to get people. And it's really easy to do. Um, I also discovered that um, the um, – I'm just flicking through now – that the um, – yeah. 
you hear that, any like monstrous noises on this episode, yeah. it's just it's, just just those children joining just in. Just my, my my children. Yes, that's that's life, isn't it? Because it's what half past half past four and yeah. yeah. And cool. in all fairness, I moved the recording, so I yeah. brought this on myself. But it's it's fine. That's that's life for you, isn't it? Hmm. It's life with having children. So um, I, I'm going to read this verbatim from you, actually, from okay. the book. Now it says Lloyd's of London, which is one of the largest uh, insurance brokers in the world had its humble beginnings as a coffee shop. So they, that's a fun fact for you. Right. And the porters that work there still, to this day, are called waiters. Really? So there's a fun fact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a, there's a fun fact to you. And um, the coffee that actually started to grow in Brazil was all about, was from um, Gabriel de Clou, who was a French naval officer in the 17th century. So he went into um, King Louis's garden, took a cutting, uh, nurtured it on the tr- on his trip to the New World, gave it its rations and its water, and then planted it. And that's how coffee um, grew, started to grow in Brazil, all because of this chap. That's mad. Mad, isn't it? Just because of that, that one chap, because he, he wanted to bring coffee into the New World, and, and, and he did. Marvellous. And if you think Absolutely. now, like the amount of coffee that comes from Brazil, Colombia, Mexico, Guatemala, like yeah, yeah, like well, literally... Brazil's the largest, the largest supplier of, of coffee in on on the planet. Yeah, they, su- so, they so supply the most. That yeah. one move changed the world. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, yeah, yeah, and especially for you know like all the farmers and stuff like that because they most of them have had um, have had these farms through generations and generations and generations so they just it's this you know it's their life that's that's all they do you know they grow coffee and their their grandfather grew it and their grandfather grew it and their grandfather grew it and that's what that's what they do that's their life um so just because of this chat you know it's given people generations worth of of employment which is great that's incredible so my next point you're yes. actually the official coffee supplier for a very well-known football club. <laughs> uh, I am. This is very new news as well. This is very new news, yeah. You know, I like to keep it fresh on the Stay Hungry podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, who are they and how did that come about? Um, so they are um, EFL Championship side, Queen's Park Rangers Football Club. Yeah. Um, so they are, I am now um, their... Their official, um, their official coffee partner. Why? Yeah. So basically, I, I long story short, I got contacted on LinkedIn. Um, big up to LinkedIn, and um, we got put together. We had a chat and worked out what would be right for us, what would be right for them, um, and then shh, and then and here we are. Yeah, I'm now their official coffee partner. So I put some equipment into their new training facility. Yep. Um, they take coffee for me for the players, and they've also got a exclusive. Um, I've called it the Loftus Roast, as they play at Loftus Road, nice. um, which is their exclusive coffee, which is just made, which is an exclusive blend, just, just for, them. for them. Yeah, which they sell in their shop and online and stuff. So yeah, so that's that's really cool. So we're hopefully we're going to go down and watch them play um, Cardiff on the on New Year's Day. So be nice. nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I'm gonna take take the take dad and, and Caleb, which will be fun. Have a road trip. So, like I hope you don't mind. Like for a little bit of context here, when I met Paul, he had a little coffee van and <laughs> um he used to dot around various industrial estates and business parks and and villages and towns serving coffee. <laughs> yeah. And and now this guy Bumbling around Wales is, is, is a published author in the space. He's in the indie coffee guide. I know he's at some amazing food events next year. He's the official coffee partner of Queen's Park Rangers, uh, a published author, got his own premises, supplies coffee to multiple cafes throughout Wales and beyond, supplies coffee beans to multiple businesses that are blatantly copy and co break. Uh, <laughs> like, mate, that's uh, roughly in a four to five year window, that is a big journey. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, and it, sometimes it takes you to like do things like this to talk talk to you, Joel, to actually sit down and think. Actually, yeah, I've done I've done quite a bit. Because mm. um, sometimes you you know you get 
you get down into the weeds and you forget it, there's there's it, people aren't paying your invoices and your delivery was late and your suppliers are letting you down and stuff and it's like oh it's all going wrong and throw yeah, yeah. but then actually when you think back and you reflect maybe at the end of the year obviously we're coming up to the end of the year now and you actually think well actually what have i done this year um and you and you can think well actually yeah you know i'm the official coffee partner of queen's park rangers which is you know the, I don't think there's any other, I mean, I'm not sure, don't quote me on this, but I don't think there's any other coffee supplier who can say that. Um, you know, I'm a published author. Which... Oh, cer cer certainly not like an independent coffee supplier. No, no, no. yeah. I mean, yeah. you probably get your customers or what have you, but yeah, certainly an independent, um, you know, it's a small, small business. You know, I'm a, I'm a published author, um, which is something I thought I'd never say. Um, you know, we've probably, probably had our, one of our best, a best months like this month just just gone in november um yeah and i think i think you know sometimes you do you do have to sit and reflect you know um because otherwise you you don't appreciate it and and you don't realize actually what you have achieved yeah um, and and you you you, you kind of you have to do that you and i think to, you I think have as, to take the time to do it as a business owner as well especially business owner in a growth phase and you know, as you can imagine, we deal with quite a lot of business owners in a growth phase. Yeah, yeah. Very often, you don't have much more to show for it, personally. Mm. So it can feel like you're doing loads more work and working even harder to end up with the same thing. Yeah. But, but you're forgetting that the, the the asset that you've built is so much bigger than it was before. Yeah. And you've nurtured this thing into existence and. Mm. And actually, when you take a step back and look at how much more attractive your business is to potential investors or to being bought out or to if you needed finance to grow even more, you've completely changed your outlook and your world. Mm, yeah. From like you say, from a little coffee van that just pootled around Clesley and Kamal then, you know, yeah. on, during the week, you know, to now be saying, I am the official coffee partner of Queen's Park Rangers, you know, which is, which is massive, you know, it's, yeah. it's a, it's a, I, th I mean, it's a, it's a big achievement um, to be able to say that, you know, it's taken work to get to that stage, to be able to, it's not just something that I, it came out of thin air and landed on my lap and, and I, I went, Oh yeah, you know, I'll, I'll take a punt at that. You know, it's take to, I've had to make the decision to do it. And we've had to have the talk for what would work for you, what would work for us as a company, you know, because, yeah it's not as if it's Cardiff, you know, it's a London based club. So it's not like it's a local team, but yeah. then I've got to think, well, you know, look at the stats on how many eyeballs that they get uh, yeah. on a weekly basis. Um, look at the, 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 the types of players that are playing um, at the club, you know, and, and how many you know, followers they have on Instagram and what their influence is, you know, and if, and if they, if they can come on the journey with me and, mm. and do all that kind of stuff. So it's like, you know, it's that, that one step and that one decision could completely next year, you know, completely change, completely change the business. Um, which I'm, you know, I'm, I'm really looking forward to. And I think it's going to be quite an excellent, hopefully it'll be quite an exciting time next year, just to see where this would, where this will lead. Um, yeah. And I think a lot of people forget that when they're like growing their business and, uh, looking to build up their sort of touch points that there's an element it's not gambling but there's an element of you have to you have to build multiple touch points because one of those touch points is what's going to unlock the future for you mm. and the the fear of rejection and the fear of that not working out is what stops most people doing it but you know you, my my journey is very similar i i took risks and did things that other people wouldn't do to get the business to the next level. And, and mm. now I'm in, I'm in a similar place again. We're in that kind of um, plateau bit where it's like I'm looking for the next opportunity, the next mm. thing. Um, and like, yeah, this QPR one that you've done is just like, uh, well, I, I know it turned heads. It turned heads in, in our office. It's like one of those things mm. that just went, bloody hell. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you ended up at the training ground with the players, showing them around yeah. the coffee and stuff. Like that's yeah, wild. Yeah, yeah. It was a, it was a great day. You know, it was one of those like I had to, you know, turn around and pinch myself to think. You know, I'm I'm here in, uh, in in London installing some kit with with all these you know professional football players and and, and like the facility that they've got there. 
And I mean, I mean, they're you know they're they're a championship side, so they're, they're you know they're not top flight. They're no, you know like Man United or whatever. Yeah. But you know their their facility was was unreal. Like the stuff that the, the equipment that they've got there um, is just it's just unreal. And and to think that I'm now part of that. Yeah. You know, I'm part of that that ilk that that's with you know in in every day when the players are going in and they're having a cup of coffee, it's my coffee that they're using. You know, every every day. Um, you know, and that and that's you know it's, it's amazing to think you know some some of the players won't be as into it as others some some of the players will just want a coffee and, and that's it they off they go but there is there are others especially the three that are actually on the bag so when you when you see the bag you'll see the players that I mean yeah you know they're really into it so we were having you know a lot more of a deeper chat into how they actually make it and what they do and 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 why and all these other all these other technical t- um, yeah. technical bits about making coffee but yeah, it was just you know it was just a great day. I mean, I'm, I'll be I'll be going back because they 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 need another bit of kit um, putting in as well. So probably in the new year now I'll be going back again. So that'll be another another day trip down to London to um to put some more stuff in. But yeah, it's just you know it's just it's just an exciting time really. You know, I think yeah. it's, it's it's just taking you know, like maybe just coming on here to actually sit and my my view. I'm looking kind of out. Um, and it's, it's quite like the sun's just gone down. You probably can't see me very well on the camera, but um, yeah, it's quite a reflective time around Christmas, isn't it? You know, yeah. like you you do reflect a bit more about what you're doing and and, and how your year's been potentially. Um, yeah, and I think I've got quite a lot to be grateful for. You know, I've I've been listening to a lot of like podcasts and stuff as you've as you have seen on my stories number two, the old Co- Co- Break Stay Hungry podcast. Love that. Thank you very um, much. There you are. I was listening to your your latest one, your your um your Shopify one on on the way home this afternoon yeah. uh, from Lena. Um, so yeah, I think I think you know a lot of the things I've been listening to have, have been you know talking about gratitude and how that can get you, um, you know, talking about like talk about the universe and all that kind of stuff, you know, and putting yourself out there and being grateful for what you've got and. And what what that will bring to you, um, yeah. you know, manifesting manifesting that the life that you want may be a bit woo woo, but you know those kind of things that you you need to kind of think about because I know a lot of the people once you start circling in the circles of these people who are very successful, you realise that they listen to the same things, they they do the same things, mm. they they read the same things, you know they and they you you think well you kind of join the dots and think okay well this this author is is coming around again or this book is coming around again this podcast is coming around again this um this life choice is coming around again so if you're really successful and you're doing it and and you're really successful and you're doing it 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 can't be to chance it's got to be that these choices that you're making are actually influencing your life and making yeah. it the life that you want to lead. Um, you know, a, a lot of it is is, is just down to that. Because I think you know, now I've been a bit more switched on to that. I I, I notice it more. Um, yeah, and I try and notice when if I'm having a bit of like a down a downer, I try and flip it on its head and think, okay, let's not get down into that part right. of my brain yeah 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 let's let's flip it on its head and be like okay let's try and turn this positive into a negative i know it's a cliche but you know trying or, 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 neg- or negative into a positive that, that's the one sorry <laughs> <laughs> i'm glad you're listening so yeah turn that negative into a positive you know and try and try and flip it on its head to find the the, the positive out of what why what, what happened you know that like every day's a school day you know you've got to you've got to learn you know um i, I heard something yesterday um with with uh, there's that spider-man quote isn't there with great um with great power becomes great responsibility um or but with it's that applied power you can have the power but you've got to apply it yeah for it to really make a difference that's that's the whole thing like the manifesting thing um it's a it's a fairly big buzzword at the moment people saying can you manifest this blah 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 and it's like manifesting in my view is knowing what you want (laughs) and taking the actions to get there yeah you can't just sit and hope no Uh, and and at the same time 
I think the things you've touched on there, the positive, the sort of positive mental attitude, the gratitude, the various things um, that you can do along the way, turn negatives into positives, looking at the things you could do better, the things that you shouldn't do anymore, the things you need to do more of. They're all the things you have to have in place to get to the result. Yeah, absolutely. And it's like you say, you know, Andy touches on it, shiny object syndrome. Mm. You know, people will be like, you know, their Facebook ads will be working really well and they'll come to you and say, oh, I've seen this new thing. Let's do that. And you'll think, yeah, but what? For, why? This thing that you're doing here is working really well. Why, yeah. why are you wanting to change it? And why are you wanting to stop that to jump onto this bandwagon that's just suddenly appeared that may fizzle out and then you've invested all your time into that? But the, the things that was working really well for you is is gone and buried, and yeah. now you've got to start from scratch again. And, and, and that's I, I come across that a lot, a lot. And like from a, a psychology perspective, I think it's you know everyone should you're going to enjoy the journey more than you enjoy the destination. Mm. But the the problem is when things are working, the journey becomes a little bit boring. Yeah. So it's like, oh, well, that ad set's working really well. That landing page is working really well. Money's flowing in. Like some people call it the comfort zone. You get comfortable. But I don't I don't think the danger of being comfortable is the comfort. It's the boredom. Mm. And then that's when people start going, oh, what if I just tweak this? What if I did this charity fundraiser? What if I put on this massive event? And before you know it, you're like burnt out. You, you've like spinning too many plates you've got all these different things going on and the thing that you were good at and that worked well for you doesn't serve you anymore and no. that, that's a real tricky one for business owners that because yeah you need to enjoy the journey but also if it's not broke don't fix it no exactly right exactly right because then because then like you said it'll just it'll just fall apart and then what was working really well for you doesn't potentially work anymore and you've got to start from scratch again yeah, hundred percent. So, uh, you've you've been an incredible guest. Um, Thank you, as well. and my children, <laughs> and your children. Yeah, I'm 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 sort of where they've been so patient, and I I think feel like I should give them their dad back. But I'm going to ask you a couple more questions, but before I do, yeah. Uh, number one, where where do people get your book? Uh, on Amazon. Yeah, just search for uh, Espresso Yourself, and it's probably maybe four or five down on the list. Wicked, Espresso Yourself by Paul Kamek, unlocking the secrets of mind-blowing espresso. And Boom. if they want to order some of your amazing coffee, yeah. where do they go? Go to www.alfiescoffeeco.co.uk. Wicked. Right. My last two questions, and I ask these to every guest on the podcast, so you must yeah. have known this was coming. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what's your favorite film and why? Uh, the Jungle Book. Oh yeah, uh, and that's the the reason behind that is not necessarily just because of the film, although though it's a good film, it's the it's the emotional attachment I have to it. Mm -hmm. So um, I can't remember how old I was. I was I was young, maybe maybe Caleb's age, maybe a bit younger, maybe five, six, seven, um, and I had it for Christmas on v on VHS. Nice, says how old I am. Um, and so I on, on that point, how much one. easier would Christmas be now if you could still buy people videos? Oh yeah. It's, it's simple but then you can't now you can't because it's like oh you don't buy me that i can stream it yeah it's, it's like it's everyone no everyone in my family was sorted with either like a cd or a dvd done yeah Chris, christmas yeah. done yeah yeah sorry sorry right, Jungle Book. virgin virgin megastore mm. that was that was the place to go in Coventry. it was like what do you want for christmas <clears throat> or what do you want for your birthday you just go down that cd that dvd that and it was great and you had a stack and it was brilliant i can't do it now yeah anyway um so yeah so i i sat um on my on my granddad's lap um who was called alf hence the name of the business nice that's the, that's the link um i sat on his lap um and watched it horribly when i opened the packet until i went to bed so i just sat on his lap and watched it and it it went and it stopped and we rewound it and put it in again and rewound it and watched it and watched it and watched it and watched it. And I, ha I know I have that fond memory. So every time I watch Jungle Book now, that's the memory that is associated with it. And that's why I love it so much. Nice. Who's your favourite character? Um, Probably King Louis, I think. Are they King, yeah. King Louis or Baloo? 
I think. Yeah, I think yeah. Uh, I think Baloo's the safe answer, but I think King yeah. Louis King Louis might be the. If you go, if you were going to go to a party, you take King Louis, wouldn't you? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Baloo is you know he's lovable, isn't he? And, and he's the good guy. But then, you know, King Louis just he's got a bit of a side to him, hasn't he? Yeah. Yeah, he's got a bit about him. A bit about him, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As a monkey. <laughs> What is he? He's in in the cartoon. He's an orangutan, isn't he? So, yes, he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cool. What a guy. Um, yeah. A singing orangutan as well. And then I think in like the in the newer CGI version, I think it's called a Gigantopithecus. Yeah, he's that one with like the big big kind of face, isn't it? Yeah, but he's he's massive as well. He's massive. Yeah. 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 That's I guess. The if I got that right, if it is Gigantopithecus, I I'm pleased with that. But, well. Uh, Hell of a name, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Throw me out there, right? <laughs> <laughs> this is taking a turn. Um, last question: What's the best yeah, mistake yeah. you've ever made? Uh, the best mistake was um, working for a company um, before I started my business. Um, I won't say who the company are, but they rent cars, um, and if I didn't work for them and get to the bottom, I wouldn't have made that jump to start the business. Yeah. So essentially I was working, you know, 12, 13, 14, 15 hour days. Um, wasn't seeing my kids, Well, I didn't have April then I just had Caleb. So I wasn't seeing Caleb. I could probably go three or four days without seeing him because of the time I was getting up and the time I was coming in to, to, from, from work. And it just got to the point where I thought, you know what? F this. Um, I, I need to make this jump, and if I don't do it, then I'm just going to work myself into the ground and be really yeah. ill. Um, yeah. So the the mistake is getting that job, um, but then the the flip side of that is if I didn't take that job and get to where I was mentally and physically, I wouldn't have taken the jump <clears throat> to start the business. And then here I am now as the official coffee partner of QPR and a published author. Yeah. Paul, you've been a, a wicked guest. Uh, listeners, if you are listening, remember Amazon and you, Espresso Yourself by Paul Kamek. And if you want some coffee, Google Alfie's Coffee and get it ordered. Paul, thanks for being a wicked guest. Thanks for having me, Joe.